And we are back in Studio K with Soul Flower. Tell me, how are you all feeling after that incredible performance? Mm. <laughs> Jeez. Say it again. I'm feeling good. Definitely like nerve wracking, you know? It's kind of strange. It's like eerily quiet in here, you know? <laughs> so, like, for sure, for sure. I said that pretty much when I walked in too. Like anytime you walk into a room that's like sound treated, it's always like disorienting at first, you know? But Absolutely. Have fun. Now, do you all want to go down the line and introduce yourself, your names, and your instruments? Uh, my name is Matt. I go by Frequency as an artist name. I play guitar in Soulflower. My name is Victor. I'm also a guitarist. My name is Zeke, and I play the drums. And my name is Anaya, and I'm lead vocalist and bassist of Soulflower. Cool. And yeah, nerve wracking, I would say, but only when the on air light came on, <laughs> then I started freaking out. <laughs> for sure, for sure. It sounded great. Um, so, those tracks we just heard, those are Driving Around, Timely, and Water Song. Yes. So, those songs aren't on streaming yet, correct? They're not. They're only available in real life. Okay. And, and there's, there's some videos of Water Song up on your YouTube, correct? Yes, yes. Cool. So are there any plans for getting those on streaming? or? Uh, for sure. Um, like I said earlier, we did record seven songs. I won't call it a project yet. Not, not going to call it a project yet, but seven songs. That is our complete set that we've been playing for like the past couple months at shows. Um Driving Around Timely, those two songs are a bit newer, so those won't be out with that, with those other songs, but they'll be out soon. Um, and Water Song is going to be out with that other like project. So uh, Water Song will be in your hands soon. <laughs> and the other ones, yes, yeah, soon to come as well. Cool, cool. Exciting. So I've got a few questions about the origins of your group. Do you want to tell me about how you all met and how this group sort of came together? Yeah. Um, so Soulflower started off as a solo project of mine. Um, it came about when I was exploring music with other artists in the city. Um, and I got the opportunity to play with some musicians for my first time um, with my original music. And that like was a catalyst into this like amazing beautiful community of musicians and artists where I met um, Frequency and from there I met Zeke and um, from there I met Victor. Victor actually is, um, I met Victor through a friend so, um, but like still in the same arts community. Um, so that's kind of how we came to be. Um, yeah, so it going from like less of like a solo project to more of um, I write the music, but I bring it to these guys and I am like, please add and what do you think and what would be, um, what would sound good basically because they all are so talented at their instruments and I don't play drums, I don't play a lot of guitar. Um, so it's nice to collaborate with them and I'll let them speak maybe on their experience if that's cool or whatever y'all want to say. Um, I used to live in like a house full of like artists and DJs and stuff like that. And then, yeah, just pretty much a ton of artists would come through like every day. And uh, one day Z came through because one of our roommates wanted to do like a little video, you know, live set kind of vibes. And Zeke was on drums. I was on bass at the time. I was like trash at bass at that time, but... <laughs> We picked up the slack, I think, now. Um, and, um, yeah, pretty much since that day, me and Zeke have been, like, hanging out here and there. We started a, a band together, the first band I was in. It was just me, him, and his cousin. I was on guitar, he's on drums, and then we had a vocalist. And then, yeah, like, since then, I've played in a bunch of groups, and I played in uh, Anaya's first, like, Soulflower gig with a band, and then... When she was looking for a drummer, I was like, yo, I got the, the homie. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it just kind of fell into place like that. Okay, cool. 
So um, your music sounds like it's inspired by a pretty wide variety of different genres. Uh, could you all tell me about what sort of music you listened to growing up? For sure. Um, well, personally, um, I listened to a lot of Erykah Badu, um, a lot of Mary J. Blige, um, a lot of R&B uh, lead vocalist singers, I would say. Um, and that really, I think, inspired me at a young age to, like, express through, like, singing a lot. Um, yeah, what would be your guys' like early influences? Uh, a lot of my early influences uh, as the drummer were a lot of subgenres of rock music, and I'm into a lot of different types of punk and alternative rock, and then some R and B and jazz as well. So that was definitely an influence for me just soaking up all the types of people around me playing music and trying to draw different influences. So, yeah, mostly different types of rock, though. I would also say a bunch of different other genres, but I, yeah. Um, my dad was, like, a vinyl DJ in college, so he's, like, a big music nerd. Always loved jazz and stuff like that. And we would, like, make trips to Chicago because that's where most of my family's from, and, like, he'd always be playing you know, like old 70s soul stuff in the car or whatever. So, like, yeah, a lot of Grover Washington, you know, Jill Scott, some, like, 90s, 2000s R&B and stuff, too. So it was a nice combination of things, but, like, mostly black music. Bam. Same kind of goes for me. Uh, my dad listened to a lot of, like, rock music and jazz and R&B, so definitely grew up with the radio on 24-7. Um, like to listen to a bunch of, like, uh, John Mayer and... D'Angelo and a bunch of other R&B artists, so. For sure. Super cool stuff. I can hear all those influences. So uh, could you tell me about what your introductions to the Twin Cities music scene was like? Like, do you all remember the first local show you ever went to? or The first local show? Mm. Um, I remember seeing... Chastity Brown in Hopkins at the Hopkins Center for the Arts at a young age. And that was really dope to see a um, another like female musician doing her thing up on stage in the city of Hopkins, which is if that's where I grew up. And if you haven't been there, it's like a type of vibe. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was like just refreshing to have her presence in 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 Hopkins and um in high school um I went to arts high school and there's lots of like house shows going on I don't remember the first one I went to but um I I always had fun and always like wanted to be one of the people performing so um it feels fulfilling to be in that space now do y'all remember your first like local show here in minneapolis you do Speak on it. <laughs> first local artist i saw was ricky monique i think it was like last year i actually went with nico mm. so that was actually really awesome at the uh what's it called i'm gonna bring for it at the dakota yeah, oh. Dakota, so. Super cool venue. Oh, yeah. They got good food there, too. But, yeah, awesome show. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Yeah, there's, like, there's a lot of amazing shows happening, and that's been happening here. So it's, a, it's an honor and privilege to be a part of the scene, and, you know. For sure. Uh, and speaking of different venues, so I've seen you all have played at a big variety of different venues. Do you prefer sort of playing at bigger venues where you're on stages or... Do you sort of prefer the intimacy of house shows, or what's y'all's preference? Hmm, good question. I like the bigger ones because the sound's usually better. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> kind of the same for me. Like, I feel like it depends on how it sounds from the stage, and then, like, obviously kind of like the vibe of the people working there and stuff can create, like, either a good or an okay atmosphere, mm -hmm. you know? I do kind of like the feel of the low-key house shows, though. I feel like it gives us a lot of room to just kind of experiment and just kind of be ourselves. Yeah, I would agree that the house shows or the 
or even playing at 7th Street, like just the more smaller venues where like our sound is like being kept in. But like, I don't know, it just sounds so good, like in a room full of people, but like enclosed, I guess. Um, it's, it's nice to like be able to like look out and see faces, of course. Um, yeah. And then just be able to like play around more and feel a bit loose. Yeah. For sure. For <laughs> sure. Um, moving on to some of the songwriting, where do the lyrics to these songs come from? So I write all the lyrics to the songs. These lyrics come from my life experience, <laughs> to put it easily. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I feel like music for me, and I bet these guys would say the same, is mu music is therapy for us very much. Um, it's a way of channeling our emotions and getting them like out of our system. Um, but yeah, I think that answers the question. For sure. And I've been told that you're interested in astrology. Could you tell me about <laughs> how, how does that affect you? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> yes, I do dabble. Um, I'm a Capricorn, by the way. Uh, Zeke is an Aries. Frequency is a Libra. And Victor is a Gemini. Um, I don't know what to say about it. Um... I just like astrology because I, I really like symbolism and that's what astrology is like all about. And symbolism helps me like make sense of life in general because it's so overwhelming. And I don't know, I find beauty in like hidden, like it, something could be right in your face, but what it means is not as clear as it like being right in your face, if that makes sense. Like you could see something and not know what it is, of course. And just like meaning and it just is so good. But that's why I like symbols. And um Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. And moving on to the future, do you all have any shows coming up? Yes, we do. Off the top of my dome. The nineteenth, um we'll be playing a house show. Um at Marcy Place. Um, next month in May, May 5th, we have a, oh, we're playing um, Cinco de Mayo. We'll be outside. We'll be outside, so come outside. Um, and then May 17th, uh, oh, Art of World. We'll Art be playing World. Art of cool. World. So just check out our Instagram. We'll be posting about it. We have a Facebook page too that we post on so you should check us out before the end of may because we're going to take a little break because somebody's going out of town and <laughs> then when we come back in july we'll be back with shows and we have a lot of like exciting things coming up so yeah cool is there anything you can tell us about what that is coming up or is it under wraps right now um <laughs> I don't, nobody gave me, like, anything to sign yet, but, and it's not even that crazy. It's just, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, an NDA, nobody gave me that. It's just, like, a nice opportunity with a, with a great local band. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Exciting. We'll keep a lookout for that. Yes. Uh, one last question we like to ask everyone. If you all could, like, build your dream bill, each pick one artist, pick, like, the, the lineup, the order, and the venue. Where would it be? Who would it be Yeesh. with? You don't give us enough time <laughs> to answer these questions. Are we including ourselves on that? Yeah. yeah. Like four bands total or something? It could, you can all pick one band and then Soulflower will be on there okay, too. <laughs> I gotta say Ricky Monique, right? I feel like we all know her pretty well. Mm -hmm. She's obviously like a legend in the city. For sure. Um, I'm playing a show with her coming up at the Dakota 24th with Eli. Shout out Eli Water in the <laughs> studio. Um, but I would say venue wise, Cedar is super dope. For sure. Great sound. We, I had a sound tech there that day that was just like the coolest dude and he had a sound of real right. Um, uh, two more. You all can each pick a band or like a favorite artist. Yeah. 
Well, I just got to say Willow Smith. Um, <laughs> that that would be mine. I don't know if it would be a bill. It'd probably be like, so far, Willow, you know? <laughs> Something like that. Um, that's mine. So we got Rick and Monique, so far, Willow. Who else on the bill? I think we like Blink-182 could open up for us. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. That'd be cool. <laughs> Would you come out if that was the bill? That sounds like a great bill. Yeah, I'd be there for yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, is there any final closing thoughts you have? Anything else you'd like to say? Um, I'm just going to say, hey, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having us. <laughs> Keep taking care of yourselves. Keep loving on one another and doing what you love Thank and crying. You. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Uh, we're going to kick it back to the booths for some more songs. So stay tuned on Radio K, Real College Radio.